a lot of the people who won a lot, a lot of people with Jesus, they weren't won by big name preachers or something like that. I think of, of D.L. Moody. Uh, so I'll tell the story. Forget I even said D.L. Moody for a second. One time there was, there was a a Sunday school teacher. He was just an everyday Sunday school teacher in the 1800s. And he, he was responsible doing his simple task as a Sunday school teacher. Of course, Sunday school stretched up to the teenagers at that time. But the Lord put it on his heart to reach out to one of his Sunday school students who he could tell hadn't truly met the Lord. And so he decided to go to the shoe store where this young man was working. He was 17 years old at the at the time. And he just gave a simple appeal to this young man to come to know Jesus truly, to give his heart to Jesus. He said that that basically what he said was that Jesus loved him and that he wants him to love him back. And that man was born again that day. That young man came and met Jesus that day. And do you know who that was? It was D.L. Moody. Oh, I was going to guess that. <laughs> and D.L. Moody reached thousands oh, and thousands of people for Jesus. That, yeah. Lots of people for Jesus. To this day, he's one of my favorite evangelists. I, I love, you know, reading his sermons and, and even his biographies and, and things of this sort. Many people received Bible education through his Moody Institute for generations. Mm-hmm. It was free. He had such an impact. And who reached him for Jesus? A simple Sunday school teacher. Yeah. Or I think of John Wesley, who... Uh, one of the people who raised, who helped win him to the Lord was his mother, who was just a faithful mother. And that was an amazing influence yeah. on his life. But finally, the one who won him truly to the Lord, he went to a home Bible study where a preacher, just everyday guy was, as I remember the story, was meeting in the bottom uh, story of his house. And they were reading uh, Luther's commentary to the Galatians. And John Wesley said that as he heard that being spoken, uh, he felt his heart strangely warm in st- strangely warmed and in that moment he was born again and his that started a ministry that yeah. totally changed history right. and many believe that if it wasn't for wesley and and whitefield uh being used to spark that amazing great awakening that uh england would have totally would have been right. totally destroyed it would have gone the way of the french revolution right um or i think also of charles spurgeon who he had, he had grown up under amazing Puritan preachers. He had, he, he had, for all of his youth, he had heard, you know, the deepest kind of theological preaching, but it never hit him until one day it was a snowy day when he was, he was young and he goes and he, he needs shelter from the snow. So he stops into a little dinky, uh, Methodist church. And there's a simple Methodist church. If I remember the story right, that the preacher had a, had a funny accident and, as Spurgeon is listening to this guy preach, he's almost making fun of him in his heart. Like, oh my gosh, this guy's such a simpleton, the way that he preaches, the way that he talks. But during that message, he said one simple thing that, that captured, uh, Charles Spurgeon's heart. He, he, he was preaching about looking to Jesus to live. And that was when Charles Spurgeon was born again. And so many people have been reached through that. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know. If I can be a D.L. Moody, I don't know if I can be a Charles Spurgeon. I don't know if I can be a John Wesley, but I believe that I could be an Edward Kimball and reach a D.L. Moody. And I know that yeah. you can too. Please let us know you're watching, like our video, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to click the notifications bell. And that way you'll also help others to see our content. And don't forget to check out our website, sharegodshope.com, where you can learn all about our missions work worldwide. God bless you as you share God's hope.